Hi everyone, so today we're going to look at something a little bit uh, different. Um, I'm going to go through a problem that I was having with this cooker hood, a Smeg cooker hood. It's uh, very similar to this, I don't know if it's the exact same model, but it does have similar switches on the front. Um, and I'm going to explain how I designed something and created it in Fusion 360 to improve what I think is a, a flawed design uh, for this cooker hood. So a little bit of a backstory for this. This is a Smeg cooker hood that was fitted in a new build house that I moved into about two years ago and um, about a year into owning the house the switches refused to to work. I'll demonstrate uh, how that how that um, looked in a moment because I've got the switches here. Um, after that year I contacted the um, warranty because it was still under warranty I contacted the the company and uh, they sent somebody out, somebody out for free and they replaced the switches now since then the switches have started doing exactly the same thing and the engineer who was sent out to fix it said yes this is a a design problem with the actual switches and it will keep happening and I've talked to other people on the same estate who have the same cooker hood and they also have experienced similar types of things from their switches so it's pretty clear to me this is a design problem so rather than it's probably still under warranty but rather than uh, rather than keep um, get claiming warranty I've got this kind of mindset that I want to try and fix things myself um, so find a solution myself and I've been working with 3d design and and uh, I got a, recently got a 3D printer, so I thought I'd have a go at uh, doing this. So I, just before we start, I am a complete amateur. I've always been interested in engineering, but I do not have any engineering qualifications. So this is the cooker hood on the screen right now. You can see it is quite expensive. So let's have a look at what some of the symptoms were of the problem I was having. And you might be having the same problem as well. I don't know how widespread this might be. Um, so let's have a look. I've got a camera set up here and this is, you'll have to excuse me, because the camera is the opposite way around to the movements. So I'm still getting used to this. So this is the switch unit here. It's got the switches across the top. Um, you've basically got um, a light switch, um, fan position three, that's actually working right now it doesn't normally work uh, and then two and then one for different fan speeds on here and then when you open it up um, this is this is actually the switch unit that the engineer left behind because um, it's the one that was broken the first time so I've got one spur that I've been working on and this is how I've managed to um, design something to, to fit with this so basically this works with um, fan that's the reset button to switch the fans off that's fan number one but that should latch that shouldn't just bounce up and down like that and then fan speed two that should latch and fan speed three that is still working slightly but what I came to realize was that I don't know if you can see in here um, the you might see there is one of these with a kind of golden um, golden edge on the inside. They're basically run in a, in a rail and this way and they're all connected and when you press one of the switches it kind of resets the position of all the others. So it's that common rail across the bottom. I'll try and get a better image of it not working with this with the light but let's see see this golden part down here that's basically a leaf spring and you can see the other side of it on here on that edge and that tiny tiny spring is supposed to act for all of these these switches and it's just not powerful enough it's not working so I had a look at what I could do to try and fix this and if you look down each one of these channels there's a little bit of metal there and on the next one there 
that little bit of metal when you press a switch it kind of see the channel move it switches it pops the channel upwards so you can see that the spring acts on that channel so I thought I could design something that would fit down those little channels maybe I'll only need to make one of them um, to act as like a helper spring to uh, improve the the kind of tension on that rail so the switches work and I actually tested this by poking something down there as I switched it and if there's pressure on it like there would be from a spring it actually works so we need some more tension down there so I've, I'll go through what I designed in Fusion 360 and we can we can have a look at what I did to fix it and I'll put it back together and I'll show you it working but right now all you need to know is that one always worked that's this that's the light switch this one is the reset switch so it should bounce up and down like that but this one should latch and it's not latching this one should latch and it's not latching and this one's kind of intermittent it does latch uh, but not all the time and it resets when I click it there okay so let's have a look at this Fusion 360 thing that I designed so we go across to Fusion 360 now this here is a two-piece part that's that slides down one of those channels and in fact if we just get rid of this bit for now um, it slides down the back I made a cap this part here I made a cap for the top to, to seal the spring in so it doesn't pop out and also this also helps um, create a channel for the spring so it stays located in where I want it to be and there's going to be a coil spring underneath here and I'll, I'll show you how that fits in a second but the, this is going to be a four mil coil spring really tiny spring that's compressed um, kind of lengthways like that and it's uh, located in that channel and then this bit here is really just like a locator pin that sits between the tw the switches and um, keeps it all in location and then the other part of this is the kind of plate for the spring to sit on and the back edge of this plate butts up to those little metal pieces that I was talking about earlier so the force of the spring on the front of this presses against those metal plates but the spring allows the metal plates to move backwards and forwards for when you need the switches to move backwards and forwards if that makes sense I know I'm talking a lot and you can't really see okay but um, that was my idea so I designed this I printed it with uh, an Ender, um, Ender 3 version 2 and if we flick back towards the camera I'll show you the parts that, are, that and what they came out like the lighting is not great in this room but I'll do my best <laughs> so if we go over to this here I'll try and put it into the light that's the plate so it's really tiny I used a, a 3 mil, a 0.3 millimeter nozzle on the 3d printer it won't even focus but the, that's that's the spring plate. I ordered some um, some of these coil springs on eBay, and they seem to do the job. They're, they're a little bit longer, but it, if you squeeze them in, it's actually pretty good with the tension. And then this is the other part, which is the spring locator. Okay. And that's that's what sits in in between the springs so let's assemble this and I'll show you hopefully it working like it should do so I'm just going to choose one of these holes to assemble it in and if we just get the light a bit further around maybe that's better maybe not there's more shadows so basically you take the spring and 
sorry about the focus, come on, there you go, so you take the spring and sit it in the locator, and my fingers are going to be in the way for this because it is so fiddly, and you just need to work out which side the plate is on, I'm going to put it in this one here, so I'm going to feed that in there, And it's just the right fit for sliding down. And use these tweezers to try and compress that spring a little bit. Nope. This is why I needed a, uh, a kind of cap on the top to stop it flicking outwards. I mean, maybe I need something like a screwdriver. Okay, I'm happy with that inside there. So you can see that the plate and the spring are squeezed together against the sides of the switches and then this part here is going to slide down this little gap and just firmly compress press it on top now that's not going to stay in in place because there's nothing securing it apart from when you take the plastic piece that comes with the switches. So I'm going to place that in its locator pins and you can see it's, it's I'm pretty impressed with the colour match on that, that matches up absolutely perfectly and then this top piece goes on which actually fits really nicely doesn't interfere, that part that I made just doesn't interfere and we're going to just test these switches now so we should get, that's the cancel one that should spring like normal this is fan speed number one and it latches cancel fan speed number two cancel fan speed number three cancel and then that's always the light switch so it just works as it is ok so I think that that's problem solved, we'll see how long it lasts because it seems to work now what I'm going to do is get that installed I only need to install one of those I only need to install that one in the in the working unit, well partly working unit that um, is currently on, uh, it's currently failing that's currently fitted inside the cooker hood but um, I think that that is a nice little solution if you're, if you're having the same problem then get in touch with me. Um, I can I can print more of these. I can send you a pack with um, with with the spring in as well if you're if you're interested in that. Um, just a side note: if I was to buy this this whole unit with the with the circuit board and switches, the part on um, a like a a utility parts website. I've seen range between 150, well, no, 140 and 170 pounds. So they do like to charge a lot for what's quite a simple, a simple circuit with a few switches on. So I think that this thing, which cost me pence to make, is a pretty good solution, and it's improved the design of the actual unit as well. So hopefully you. Um, enjoyed that hope it wasn't too boring I know it's a bit longer than what I normally do but um, let me know if you've got any ideas or if you you're suffering from the the, the same problem as well uh, with your smeg cooker hood I know it's quite a niche <laughs> a niche problem to have but let me know um, thanks very much for watching and goodbye